Okay, everyone, welcome to week two of Art 202. <clears throat> We're going to be describing the visual world this week. Uh, I hope everyone had a fantastic 4th of July. It was very wet and rainy here in Tennessee, but we still managed to light off some fireworks. Okay, let's jump in here. So uh, be looking for your grading from week one over the next couple days. I should have all of that back to you no later than Friday. If you have any questions about quiz grades, uh, anything on your journals, uh, please don't hesitate to let me know. And here's what we got going on this week. So we're going to be reading chapter three in our looking at art text style and the formal elements of art. You have a lecture. We do have a Q&A on our artist of the week. Uh, we have our first discussion board. And then you're going to be doing a deconstructions project and a quiz. Remember, everything is due uh, no later than Sunday at midnight of this coming week. So here's your reading and lecture again. So your reading, uh, go ahead and download the lecture slides. The lecture video is here for you. You can follow the link here or if you can just watch it here right in Blackboard. Uh, don't be intimidated. There's a lot of vocabulary this week. Everything is covered uh, in lecture. And remember that when you do your quizzes, they're open note, open book. So uh, you can always refer back to lecture. This is really this week about uh, building your vocabulary so that when we go to write about art, uh, you have those terms in your arsenal and you can describe it more than just, I like it, that's pretty, the colors look nice, right? We want to be able to describe the colors, the textures. We want to look at the tools in the artist's toolbox, see how and why they're using them and how that can impart meaning in a work of art. Okay, our Artist of the Week is a really interesting guy named Caravaggio. You're going to watch this documentary. It's uh, really well done. It's very dramatic, uh, a little bit over the top, this guy, and he was quite over the top. Brilliant artist, a very tortured soul. So enjoy this one. And then I want you to briefly answer these three questions. Again, these are, you know, two, three sentences uh, per per question. So Caravaggio is best known for his use of chiaroscuro, and that's a technique that they're going to talk about in the documentary. I want you to define this term and briefly describe how the artist uses it so successfully. Number two, list and describe three other elements of design you notice Caravaggio uses to create drama in his artwork. So you want to make sure that you do your reading and uh, watch the lecture before you watch this. That way you'll, you know, kind of be keeping in mind what some of those elements of design are. And number three, do you think Caravaggio was a mad genius or was he simply mad? How does the theme of forgiveness play into his story here? So again, remember, you don't need to submit any attachments here. You can just do this right in the text editor. So when you go ahead and click on the assignment, uh, this will pop up. And you'll have the instructions again. Remember to hit Write Submission. Don't add it here in the comments. Hit Write Submission. The text editor will pop up, and you can type your answer right in there. So the next item we have is our uh, reflection, and this is a discussion board this week. And we're going to be talking about visual elements, and we're going to kind of tie in Caravaggio here. Uh, because this is a uh, painting by a female artist from the 1600s uh, named Artemisia Gentileschi. And this is uh, called Judas Slain Holofernes. There is a version of this painting that Caravaggio does as well. And it's interesting to compare and contrast the two of them. So what I want you to do is um, answer the following in paragraph form. So after you've explored the work of Caravaggio, what similarities can you see here in the work of Artemisia Gentileschi? List and describe three visual elements learned in lecture that are present in this painting. So you're going to do that same thing over again. We're going to be practicing that a lot, listing visual elements, describing, describing, describing. You can read about uh, this work by clicking here. You can follow this link and that will... Um, if you want to look into what this works really about, the whole story of Judas slaying Holofernes, and we talk about this in lecture too. Uh, how does Gentileschi use visual elements to help tell the story of Judas and Holofernes? And then I'd like you to comment on at least two peers' posts. So do you agree, disagree with what their analysis is? Do you find something they said really interesting? Make sure that you participate because that's how you get full credit on these discussion boards. You can write me an eloquent, uh, analysis, but then you're not participating, I'm not going to give you full points. So make sure that you do that. It's about engaging. You know, art doesn't take place in a vacuum and conversation about it shouldn't either. So uh, enjoy that. That always brings up some interesting points. Okay, you have your first project. So this is going to be done as a PowerPoint presentation. You can, uh, at 
you can submit it as a PowerPoint or if you want to uh, export it as a PDF file, you can do that as well. So you're gonna pick five works of art using uh, resources below. So th these are some good links to go find these works of art. And you're gonna do one each of the following. You're gonna find a drawing, a painting, a photograph, a sculpture, and something that is graphic arts, graffiti, or symbolic uh, work. So it can be uh, an advertisement, some kind of um, movie still. Uh, there's a lot that you could do there. There's a lot of good graffiti art and street art going on in the world right now, so you may want to go that direction. But something that's just a little more uh, contemporary. So be sure to cite each image appropriately. You want to give uh, each image uh, a caption with the artist's name, the title of the work in italics, the date it was created, the medium, so is it oil on canvas, is it bronze sculpture, is it spray paint on wall, uh, is it a gelatin silver print photograph, whatever it might be, and the source. So the source is the full web address where you found the image. I should be able to copy and paste that link into my web browser and it will take me exactly to the page that the image is on. So this is the Museum of Modern Art, the Met Museum, uh, the Getty, this is the Google Cultural Institute, their art project, and this is Christians in the Visual Arts, so you may want to just explore those. Uh, those are good sources. You could also go on the Art Institute of Chicago's website. I believe it's arctic.org or .edu. Uh, but generally speaking, we want to try and stick with academic and museum sites because we know we're going to have reliable sources for artwork. So uh, I want to show you briefly Google's uh, uh, arts and culture whole project. They've actually completely reworked it, so it's a little bit different than what I'm used to. Uh, but there's all kinds of cool, you know, they do a daily digest where they've got articles and some interesting, you know, ideas. The original selfie, there's Gauguin. Uh, and if you go down here to the bottom with virtual tours, uh, this is kind of cool because you can go and explore these places. Uh, and you know, kind of do the Google Street View. If you want to go to zoom in, uh, you can go and you know click on these artworks, and then they have these amazing uh, details that you can kind of pull up and look really close. This looks like a um, Bruegel painting. Am I right? Oh, yeah, Peter Bruegel the Elder. Uh, and you can also go, I believe, uh, to the different institutions and see, uh, browse through their collections. So this is just a good place to kind of start exploring works of art. Uh, I believe there should be a place where you can search. So if we search, oh, there we go. Say we searched for Van Gogh. Uh, the artist would come up and we could go to his page and it's gonna tell you about him. It's gonna give you all the items that they have in their collection. And there should be a place where you can uh, actually walk through the museums. But so you could click, you know, on Van Gogh's self-portrait, and I believe you should be able to do that whole zoom with that as well. Uh, which, yep, there we go. So you can zoom really close in and see the texture of the paint, all that cool stuff. So moving on to this assignment, what you're going to do is I'd like two of the images to be either a Christian artist or to contain Christian themes, and uh, siva.org would be a good source for that. And what you're going to do for each of the five images, you're going to, in list format, make seven observations for each image, image excuse me, that exemplify various principles and elements of design, so all that vocabulary that you learn in lecture. You should cite any vocabulary terms, genres, art movements it may belong to. So one of your observations may be uh, that it is uh, from the analytical cubism movement. Maybe it's part of Picasso's oeuvre of work and it's, you know, a specific part. It's from his uh, blue period. That may be one of your observations. So while I don't expect these to be paragraphs, uh, I do expect that when you make an observation that you identify uh, not just what, but how and why the element is used. So don't just tell me Renaissance art. Uh, tell me just a tiny bit more than that. So, you know, one sentence would cover it. So just make sure you're being descriptive. If you're talking about uh, lighting, don't just say light. 
uh, tell me how the light was used. So just use common sense. If it's if there's a complementary color scheme, tell me what colors are in the color scheme. So I just want to make sure that you're understanding how these terms are applying to those works of art. And if you have questions, if you want to do one of them and send it to me and say, hey, does this look like what you're asking for? And I'll look over it before it's due. Uh, I'm more than happy to do that. Again, you can submit these as a, a PowerPoint or a PDF file. So there's a lot going on this week. Uh, we got our quiz. So remember, those are due uh, Sunday at midnight as well. One, uh, you have one attempt, so make sure you do it all in one session. There's no time limit, but it has to be done in one sitting. So this is what we got. We got quiz. We've got deconstructions. Uh, we have our reflection, which is a discussion board and your uh, Artist of the Week questions. Remember your Artist of the Week questions, these are quick, brief answers. So is your reflection. Really make sure you dig in on this deconstructions project. Any questions about anything we got going on this week, don't hesitate to ask me and have a great, great week.